Hey folks, my name is Cody and I want to teach you how to play some ragtime blues guitar. And the first thing that we need to do is learn the common chord forms that you're going to run across in this style of music. Now about 95% of all ragtime blues songs are in the key of C uh, simply because with the chord progressions you're going to be using the chords from the key of C fall into your left hand really really beautifully and uh, make things a lot easier than trying to play in a different key. So that's what I'm going to be teaching you is how to play some ragtime blues in the key of C. The first chord that you need to know is your basic C chord. Of course, that's kind of obvious. Then there's also your C7, which again, is kind of obvious. If you're new to the C7, just plant your pinky on the third string, third fret, on top of your regular C, and you'll have a C7. There are only two others that you really need to be familiar with. The first one you hear in Gary Davis is playing a lot. And to get that, you need to borrow your top four strings on the fifth fret and plant your pinky right on the eighth fret, and you get a really, really beautiful C. You hear this like in, a, in Cincinnati Flow Rag, he plays. So you've got that. The other one is a little bit more difficult, uh, especially if you've never done it before. And that is something that you're going to need to learn as you get into some like Blind Blake or Buddy Moss style playing. You play your regular C form, but you also need to have your sixth string fretted at the third fret. So you've got the low G and the low C at the same time. And, and when you do that, you can get into some really, really great double bass kind of. And there are a couple of different ways that you can do that. I wrap my thumb around and catch that sixth string on the third fret. So I've got both of them playing. Some people who have particularly gifted left hands can fret the lower two strings with the first knuckle of their, of their ring finger. I can't do that. If you can, best of luck to you because I think it's probably the fastest way to do that. If you're uh, really having trouble with that, you can also plant your ring finger down on that sixth string and put your pinky on the fifth string. Now, I think that's probably going to be a little bit slower and, and maybe a little bit debilitating, but if it's the best you can do, then by all means have at it. Uh, Django Reinhardt had a flipper for a left hand, and look at what he did. So if that's all you're able to do, then by God, do it the best you can. The next uh, chord that you're going to need to know is just a really basic E7. Uh, that's going to be 5th string, 2nd fret, 3rd string, 1st fret. Not too much to learn there. The next chord that you're going to need to know is your A chord. Now most people have been taught to play an A by planting their three fingers right here. And, and when you're strumming, you get a really beautiful... You know, that, that first string is open and it just rings really beautifully. But that's not particularly useful for uh, finger picking because when you're finger picking, your goal with your left hand is to have as many notes available uh, as you can at any given time. And if all your fingers are busy doing that, you don't really have many notes available. So the more common way to play an A chord in this style of playing is actually just like the C I just taught you bar the top four strings on the second fret. I live in East Austin, by the way, so you're going to hear a lot of sirens in these videos. Bar the top four strings on your second fret and plant your pinky down on the fifth. It's a really, really pretty chord, and it leaves your fingers open to play a lot of other stuff. Uh, you're also going to want to know an A7, and to do that, just lift your pinky off of the fifth, plant your middle finger right down on the third. And when you do that, you've just... You've got a lot of notes available to you. Also, a really common thing that you hear in, uh, in blues, and subsequently the ragtime blues, is to hammer or slide from your minor third to your major third. And with A, playing, playing an A that way, it's really easy to do because your minor third is second string first fret, major third is second string second fret. And so when you're playing an A like that, you can just you can slide up to it really, really beautifully and get these kind of kind of things. And you you can't really do that with this A. So once you uh once you get used to this A, 
if you're a finger picker, you'll probably not go back to the old way. I know I certainly didn't. Next chord you're going to want to know is your D7, and there are really only two of these that you need to know. First is your basic D7, right there. Uh, but again, like with, uh, with the C, you're going to want to wrap your thumb around and catch that F sharp on the sixth string, so, you got, so you've got those two bass notes available to alternate with, and you can... The other D7 that you need to be aware of Take your C7 and slide it up two frets so that you're now at the fifth fret and you've got a D7. And what you hear really commonly with that is players alternating their ring finger from the fifth string to the sixth string with the alternating bass. So with your alternating bass out of that form, what you're going to be playing is fifth, fourth, sixth, fourth, fifth, fourth, sixth, fourth. It's a lot to say. But you get the idea, and when you do that, you can just get really, really beautiful, kind of. So that's the other D7 that you need to be aware of. Um, from there, we would normally move to G. And G is probably going to be about as different for you as the A chord was that we just learned. Most people play their G with the middle finger on the 6th index finger on the fifth and ring finger on the first and we're actually going to be playing the same chord just the fingering's a little bit different what you need to do is plant your ring finger on the sixth your middle finger on the fifth and then your pinky on the first and the reason for that is you're going to be going from the g major to the g seventh really quickly and you're going to be doing it a lot so out of this form all you have to do is lift up your pinky and put your middle finger down and it's already there with the normal way of playing it i guess you you've got to move all of your fingers and that just when you get going pretty fast there's just no way that's going to work um also when you play it like that you've got all those notes available but you can just really really quickly between uh, the G major and the G seventh and you're gonna need to do that uh, pretty quickly in this style of music so those are actually all the chords that we need to play a uh, pretty basic rag and C um, so get used to using those play around with them a little bit and uh, once you're comfortable with those go on to the next video thanks